the Newark Museum's collection of Chinese art rivals any other in the world. For the exhibit Ming to Modern, Elevating the Everyday in Chinese Art, curators Catherine Ann Paul and Ulysses Dietz selected 175 amazing objects from the 16th century to the present day, many of them never seen by the public until now. Our collection has work as fine as any Chinese collection throughout the world, whether you're in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, or whether you're in the National Palace Museum in Taiwan, or the National Palace Museum in Beijing. The caliber of the works in this collection and in this exhibition are equal to um, all of the great collections of the world of Chinese art. The painting behind me, the museum purchased in 1928, but I don't know that it was ever put on view. This might have been the first time since 1928 that this painting has come to the public eye. To my knowledge, it's the only one of its type that shows such an amazing family portrait with a matriarch, a mother at the center instead of a father at the center. Um, and while it's staged in a garden, um, it still shows family groupings and um, everyday things that they're wearing that are still elevated because they're such rich things. Um, it's a really unique piece. Elevating the everyday is uh, untranslatable into Chinese. We tried, but the translation of the title into Chinese, we just gave up on that, apparently. But the idea is something that Katie loved because it resonates with the kind of founding philosophy of this place, which is that ordinary functional objects can be beautiful and transcendent and can touch your life. It doesn't have to be a Michelangelo sculpture, it doesn't have to be a Da Vinci painting, it can be a vase or a bowl or a table. And in China, and throughout Asia actually, but in, for this show, in China specifically, there is no such thing as an everyday object because every object is treated in a way that touches on um, the status, the, the uh, daily activities, the position in the family, the position in the country of the person who owns it. And so nothing is just decoration. There are no just random pretty flowers on things in China the way there are in the West. Everything means something. If you look at one of the paintings in the exhibition of kitty cats playing with butterflies amid peonies, um, that's actually a birthday wish for someone who is in their 60s and 70s. That's a rebus puzzle within the painting. When you join the sound of the words in Chinese with a cat, butterfly, and peony, it means may you celebrate wealth and health in your 60s and 70s. And so that's part of what the title really meant, is elevating all of these different things that you could consider every day to things that are far beyond the everyday. The Ming Dynasty, which is, became the sort of stereotype in the Gilded Age of good Chinese material, because lots of Ming material was being shipped out of China for, for Western collectors. And now, of course, the flow is entirely backwards. All of the great Chinese material is being bought by China now. It's being bought back from the West. It's a complete reversal of the Gilded Age, because it's the Gilded Age in China right now. But Ming became, because Ming covered such a long period, and the Ming emperors, the whole series of them, were fascinated not only with technical quality and artistic beauty, but they also replicated, they copied things from the distant past because the Chinese have always revered the past. So it's all about this sort of uh, homage to the past and, and revering the past while being innovative in the present. Also included in the exhibit is the work of contemporary artists who, in the Chinese tradition, honor the past by keeping it alive in the present. We asked Catherine Ann Paul if she had a favorite piece in the exhibit, and why. It's a huge lacquer table, it's a wine table, and it's this fabulous dragon rondelle with dragons climbing the legs, um, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very old table, you know, it's a pre-16th um, century table. 
And so, to my eyes, it's one of the most glorious and fabulous things. It's one of only three known in the world today. Um, but I sometimes call it the thing that, that only a curator can love, because perhaps to the uneducated eye, it's, it looks more scruffy. But if you look closely, you'll see all the mother of pearl still uh, twinkling out of it in gold. And when you look carefully, you'll see the dragons. It's really easy to see the dragons on the legs. It's, it's a different challenge to see it on the surface of this table. But it, it's an incredibly special piece, and I'm so thrilled that we have it in the collection.